This is not just a six pound test technique. It's not complicated. Today, I wanna to talk about a spy bait or spin bait. Fishing a spy bait is a technique that came out of Japan that will literally catch fish when no other technique will catch them. Now, if you're unfamiliar with spy baits, it's basically this little bait right here that has a prop on each side. It looks a lot like a topwater prop bait, but this bait actually sinks. Now, if you fish in lakes that are highly pressured or very clear, you're going to want to learn the ins and outs of spy bait. So stay tuned. It's going to be a good one. This video is brought to you by sportsmansoutfitters.com. Right now, there is still an awesome deal going on on the Arc Lancer Pro Series rod. If you buy one rod, you can get the second rod for just $19. That is a $100 rod for $19. Bucks. You can't beat it. So if you are on the market for some rods, right now is the time to buy. You can click the links down below in the description and you're greatly going to help support the Bass Fishing HQ channel. Now, I think something that has held a lot of people back from actually fishing this technique, a spy bait, is that it just seems very technical. If you listen to a lot of the videos that are out there, guys talk about counting the bait down and using six pound test. And I'm gonna let you know right now that this is not just a six pound test technique and actually fishing this bait and catching bass on it can be extremely easy. Now, I first really fell in love with the spy bait when I was actually fishing up in New York. The lake that I was fishing in New York had a lot of suspended largemouth and smallmouth and these bass were actually feeding on really small bait fish. Now, the absolutely crazy thing that really made me fall in love with this bait is that these fish that were feeding on these little minnows were actually busting and blowing up all over the place. So my first inclination as an angler was to pick up a topwater bait. And I'm telling you what, no matter what topwater bait I tried, I tried poppers, I tried small walking baits, I tried prop baits, I tried everything that there was when it came to a topwater and I could not catch these fish. Now at the time, one of my best friends had told me about a spy bait that he was able to catch a few fish that were blowing up on bait fish with this bait. And so I picked the bait up and literally within a few casts, I had caught my first bass on a spy bait. Now I spent the rest of that day catching both largemouth and smallmouth on a spy bait and really learning this technique. And I've been able to take this bait to other places in the country and catch a lot of bass on it. Now, the most important part to this technique is actually reeling it at a slow or medium slow pace. This is actually one of the very few techniques in bass fishing that I really don't impart any action to. I simply cast this bait out, bomb it out there, and just reel it at that slow to medium slow pace. This bait under the water just has a small shimmy to it. And every time it shimmies like this, it sends out a little flash of light. And that flash of light is really what attracts bass from a distance. Now, what I have found about spy baits like the Duo Realis and the Berkeley spy bait is if you cast it out there as far as you can, is as soon as it hits the water, you start reeling it. That bait is going to stay about four to seven foot below the surface of the water. So you can kind of use that as a reference as you are fishing this bait. The other thing about a spy bait is that it has drawing power. I talk about drawing power power with baits like a jerk bait or a big swim bait. They can draw fish in from a distance. And this to me is also a very clear water technique. Usually I want water clarity where I can see down at least five foot. Now, because that I know that that bait stays four to seven foot down, I fish it on structure and cover that is usually 15 feet and less. If the bass are sitting in 12, 13, 14, 15 feet, and that bait is coming at them about seven foot down, they will easily go up six, seven, eight foot to get that bait. So if I fish a hump and it's 15 feet on top, or if I fish the end of a point and it's 12 feet on top, I'm simply going to cast this bait out and reel it as soon as it starts hitting the water. Again, maintaining that slow to medium slow pace. That's the way that I fish this bait like 95% of the time. I'm going to look for structure in anywhere from 10 to 15 feet of water. I'm gonna cast this bait over that and reel it over that structure. Now that structure could be rock piles or it could be cover like brush piles or grass lines. Now the other way to fish this bait is what the Japanese anglers call tracing the bottom. And in this situation, I actually like to use straight fluorocarbon line. And the reason that I like straight fluorocarbon is it just helps to keep that spy bait down there and a little bit deeper 
deeper water. Now, this is not a technique that I do often, but when I have done it, the biggest thing for me is I'm going to cast that bait out maybe in 20, 25, 30 foot of water, and I'm gonna let that bait sink all the way to the bottom. Now, once that bait hits the bottom, I am going to kind of pop that bait a little bit off the bottom, and that really just gets those blades turning and that bait moving. And then I'm going to reel it at a very slow pace. Now the Japanese call this tracing the bottom because you want to keep that bait kind of close to the bottom. Usually I like to kind of keep it three or four foot off the bottom. Now even if you don't have a forward facing sonar that you can see that bait down there, you can still do this technique. Actually this is the way that I learned and basically I'm going to cast that bait out, let it hit the bottom, pop it and start reeling it really slowly but about three or four times during my retrieve I'm actually going to kill that bait and let it sink back down to the bottom. That just helps me to know and ensure that I am keeping that bait close to the bottom at all times. Now, probably the number one thing that I have figured out about this technique is that if you do not have the right equipment, you are going to lose a lot of fish on a spy bait because a spy bait is pretty heavy. It has small hooks. And when those fish come up and jump, it's very easy for them to throw that bait if you're not fishing the right system. Now, the most important part of the equipment that you use for a spy bait is your rod. If you do not use the right rod, you will probably lose 50% of the bass you hook with a spy bait. Now I have tested and used several different lengths and actions of rods and I feel like I finally have it dialed in. The rod that you want is a seven foot, six inch medium light power rod. I have found that anything from a moderate to a fast action will also work with this technique. Now I know that you may be thinking that a seven foot, six inch rod sounds like a really long spinning rod and it's definitely a longer rod than I use for most finesse techniques but I have tried everything from a six foot six inch rod to a seven foot six inch rod. And the longer the rod is, not only the longer a cast you can make, but the better it is at keeping those fish pinned. Now, listen, I know that everybody has a budget and everybody can't just go out there and spend, you know, $100, $150 on a rod. So I'm not saying you have to have that rod. If you're just trying to learn this technique, you can use your kind of typical spinning rod, something that's a seven foot medium power rod. You you will probably struggle at times at keeping bass on, but it's okay at the beginning. If you're just trying to learn a technique, just use what you have. Now, if you wanna get serious about spy baiting, I really do suggest that longer medium light rod. Now, the other big component to spy baiting is actually the hooks that are on that bait. Now, this spy bait that I'm holding right here is the Berkley spin bait, and it actually comes with Fusion 19 hooks on it, and those are actually the hooks that I recommend. So another Another one of my favorite spy baits is the Duo Realis. This has a little bit wider wobble to it over the Berkley bait. And so I use this one a lot, but I always try to replace the hooks on here with those Fusion 19 hooks. Most of the time that I fish this bait, I am fishing where the bait is in less than 10 foot of water. And when you fish it in less than 10 foot of water, you can use a braid to fluorocarbon leader. Now I like a longer leader, pretty much something that is 12 to 15 feet in length and I use eight pound fluorocarbon when I'm fishing it in less than 10 foot of water. The last part of this technique that is important to know is the bite. When that fish hits it, you'll be surprised that a lot of times these fish will pummel this bait. And the biggest thing that I like to do is I like to just maintain that reeling pace. As soon as that fish hits, if I feel the weight of the fish, I just lightly swing into that bass. That's going to set the hook into that fish's mouth. And then the next step is keeping that fish down. You really don't want fish to jump when you are fishing a spy bait. So I will usually kneel down on the front deck of my boat and keep my rod down to try to prevent that fish from breaching the surface. I really hope that you guys can see that this technique is not complicated. And like I said, the best way to start catching fish is by targeting schooling fish that you can see with it. Now, if you know my channel, you know that I love different Japanese techniques like a spy bait. Now, another Japanese lure that I really like is this swim bait right here. This is a swim bait that a lot of guys haven't heard of and it's very effective. Like I like to use this as much as a mag draft swim bait at times. So if you guys enjoyed this video, I think you'll like this one as well. Please comment below, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.